Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video we are going to look at how to move a fish tank to a new location. We're going to look at three different scenarios. The first one is that maybe we're just moving the fish or the tank to a new location within the house. The second one is you're moving homes. You're going from one location to another, but you're typically going to do that over the course of one day. And the third option is we're moving houses maybe out of state or across country and now we've got multiple days that we're going to have our fish out of our tank. The nice thing is in the first option, we can carry over a lot of what we're learning to the other two. I hope you enjoy the video and I appreciate you being here. Now from the outset, if you've got a tank that's 10 gallons or less and you're moving it to a different location within the house, sometimes it's just easiest to move the, remove the decorations, bring the tank water down to about 75% of its original and just move the tank and refill it and put the decorations back in. Our focus here is going to be what do we do with tanks that are really over 10 gallons, at least when we're moving them within the house. So first thing, we have done this a lot in our fish room. We've moved a lot of fish in a lot of tanks. The first thing we like to do, if I know I'm going to be moving a tank or fish to a different tank, is I am going to set up water for those fish the day before. So maybe that means I'm going to have a 30 gallon bin that's going to put, I'm going to put fresh water in that, or maybe a five gallon bucket, depending on the size of the fish. But I put that water in that bin or the bucket the day before. I dechlorinate the water and I run an air stone in that water. So the water's not sitting there stagnant over the course of 24 hours before we add the fish. So I've got my water set aside. That's where the fish are going to go when I have to move things around. When I'm actually ready to move the tank to a different location within the house, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off all the electricity. So the filters, the heaters, that's all getting shut off. The exception would be the lights. I'm gonna leave those on. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove everything out of that tank, all the decorations, faker real plants, rocks, driftwood, anything where fish can hide in or behind that needs to come out of the tank. Trust me, it's going to make your life so much easier when you're trying to catch the fish. Now, if it's real plants, I'm going to put those in a separate bucket with treated water just to make sure that they stay, uh, they stay wet. Now once you've moved all that stuff in the tank, you will have probably stirred up some things that were in the substrate, detritus, fish waste. The nice thing is we're going to want to bring that water level down to about 25% of its original volume. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and gravel vac. If it's, if it's gravel, we'll go ahead and gravel vac. And if it's sand, we'll kind of move the gravel vac on the surface of the sand and try to suck out as much of that fish waste as we possibly can. At the same time, we're going to bring the water level down to about 25% of the original amount. This is going to make catching the fish a whole lot easier. The other trick that we often use is I will often use two nets instead of one. And so I will use one net to guide the fish into the second net. We'll take all the fish out of the tank and then we will put them either in that bin that I talked about earlier or the bucket. That water has been fully treated, it's ready to go. After that, we'll then remove the rest of the water and if we have to, if the tank is large and heavy, we'll remove the substrate. And I like to try to keep that wet as well because there's beneficial bacteria in that substrate and I'd like to try to keep as much of that as possible. The same thing goes for the filter media. I would prefer to keep that wet so that as much of the beneficial bacteria that was originally in there is left when we set up the new tank. All right, now that we've got everything broken down, we can move the new tank to a different location within our home. We'll add our, I try to use the original substrate. If you don't like the original substrate and you're changing it over, that's fine. And we put everything back in that we were going to use from the old setup or we put the new stuff back in. I want to get that filter up and running right away to get the water circulating in there again to try to keep the beneficial bacteria at least as healthy as we possibly can. And then the fish treat the water with dechlorinator, the fish go back in. One of the things that you should consider, especially if you're redoing the tank and you're re redoing all the decorations and the substrate, Definitely use your used filter media, but also it would be a very good idea to use something like a Fritzheim 7 or a Fritzheim Turbo Start to re-add the beneficial bacteria so that you don't get an ammonia spike later on. So that's pretty much how we move tanks from one location to another inside of a home. Now, what if you've got to actually move to a different location? Everything I've just said is basically the same with the exception of I'm definitely not going to be using a bin of water because I can't carry the bin. If it's a 30 gallon bin, you're not going to carry 300 pounds of water around. Usually what we're going to do is we're going to rely on buckets exclusively. Now, same things apply in terms of getting your old tank ready. 
you're removing all the decorations, you're turning off all the electricity, you wanna keep your filter media wet throughout the move. The difference here is the planning. I would suggest when you move that tank to a new home, either make it the very first thing you do or the very last. You wanna minimize the amount of time your filtration media and your fish are outside of that tank. That being said, if you're going to be spending multiple hours in transit from one location to another before you can get the tank set up, this is where I might invest in a battery powered air pump. And so that way your air stone is still going inside the bucket. This may also be a good time to consider having a sponge filter instead of an air stone. And that sponge filter should be in the tank about three to four weeks before you plan to do the move. That way it's got beneficial bacteria within the sponge. And that way you're not super stressed about the fish. At this point now, it's more about keeping the beneficial bacteria on your filter media healthy. So when it comes to moving from one location to another, as long as you're getting that done on the same day, everything we said earlier would still apply, except now we just wanna make sure that we can minimize the amount of time the fish are outside of their new home. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is reduce the amount of food you feed your fish 24 hours before you plan to do the move. That's gonna help reduce the amount of fish waste that's produced throughout the time of the move. Now, the most complicated situation is when you're going to be moving fish and the move is going to take multiple days. Here, the issue, the main issue is going to be how do we regulate water parameters and how do we regulate the temperature? The temperature is not something we typically worry about as much if it's going to be short term. But when we're talking about multiple days, it becomes a bigger deal, especially depending on the type of fish that you keep. Now, in this particular scenario, we've got a couple options. You can either put your fish in bags or buckets. I prefer in this particular scenario to use buckets as opposed to bags for a couple reasons. Now, the advantage of the bags is that you can put them in a cooler. Maybe you put some heat packs in the cooler, you seal that up and you can regulate the temperature a little bit easier. The downside to the bags is you're gonna have to be rebagging those fish on a daily basis and adding fresh dechlorinated water to those bags so that you don't have an ammonia spike. The advantage to the bucket, especially if you only need one, is you can still use the battery powered air pump. For the buckets, I always recommend in any of these scenarios, a lid and just drill a hole in the top of the bucket lid so you can run an air hose through there. Use a sponge filter that's already been fully cycled. The only issue that you're gonna have to deal with at that point is temperature regulation. Now here's where it gets a little bit uncomfortable. If it were me, I might try to ensure that the room where the bucket is going to be, or the car, is about 80 degrees. That's pretty warm, especially if we're dealing with a car. Now, if you're moving in the summer, that's not a big deal. But if it's gonna be colder outside, I would prefer that the room, whether it's a, if I have to stop at a hotel, or if it's going to be a car, that that car is very warm, that will keep the water in the bucket relatively warm. So if the air temperature is around 80 degrees, maybe that means your bucket water is gonna be around 76 or so, and that's usually sufficient for most types of fish. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to consider whether you're using bags or buckets is you're gonna to wanna to have water conditioner on hand, and that way you can ensure that the water that's going into the bucket or into the bags has been fully conditioned and dechlorinated. Now, even with the buckets, I would still highly recommend bringing multiple buckets. One is gonna have just water with an air stone that's dechlorinated. You can use that water the next day. You can just keep transferring the fish back and forth in between the buckets, and every day there's gonna be a bucket with the fish. There will be another bucket that's got fresh water for the following day. All right, everyone, if you're looking for more information on how to cycle a tank quickly, I will put that card in the upper right-hand corner. Appreciate you being here. If you found this video useful, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.